Welcome back here to Open Line, and uh, we're going to begin our discussion here. Anthony, I know that you do uh, a lot of work in the area of uh, video projection. Um, if you could tell us a little bit about uh, your experience and how you've seen churches use that uh, tool effectively. It used to be that it was for the, the mega churches, as you will, the people that could afford the video projection. The, the, the cost has come down so significantly that it, it literally every church can't afford it now. The benefit, though, is not to look at it as the next new hot thing, but is to look at it in perspective, and that is it's a tool set, much like a microphone aids in the amplification of the speaker or the soloist or whatever it is. The video projection or the display technology available today is nothing more than a, than a good tool to reinforce the message and to help emphasize certain points. And most importantly, it builds retention, because if you see something and hear it, you're more likely to remember that than if you just heard it. So here we're using the technology not to replace or not to be the center or focal point, but rather to be the underlying background that helps emphasize the point. And in fact, video projection is, according to the manufacturers, the fastest growing vertical market that, that manufacturers have in video projection is the church market. And that's an amazing statement to realize the churches are finally catching on with what the rest of the world's been doing once again and using the technology to get where they need to be in terms of communicating the gospel. Mm. Anthony, I appreciate the statement you made about uh, that it's not reserved for the, the mega church anymore. And I think there's been this philosophy that uh, a church has to be large to use technology. And technology comes in, uh, obviously, many forms. And also, uh, technology, uh, we obviously see this in our computers day to day, uh, is becoming more and more affordable. Um, Dave, if you wouldn't mind uh, speaking to how the you know, a small to mid-sized church that's out there uh, can effectively use uh, the technology that's available. Sure. The, uh, the, the whole key here is, is the basic uh, visual society we live in today. And, and like uh, Anthony was stating before, uh, these tools are, are, I would say, needed, yes, but almost demanded sometimes in today's society because we're so you know, visually driven right now. I'd like to add to this, Anthony. One of the things that people sometimes use as an excuse is to say we, ha we have to have it because it's a TV generation. And for a certain demographic, that is a true statement. There, there's real validity in that. Yet at the same time, we have a lot of our elderly in the services that don't see as well and don't hear as well. We have assisted listening systems now to help those people. We now can project the pastor so where they can see him nice and clear. They can't read the words in front of them with the bifocal sometimes in the hymn book, yet projected into our large screen. Now they can now participate in worship again. It is not just a seeker tool, so to speak. It is a complete tool for the church to be a better engrossed in worshiping. As we're talking about the mega churches and the idea of it evolving, if you will, down towards a smaller church, I want to be careful we keep in mind that we have a transition here through denominations also. I think you'll agree uh, we all got a good deal of our efforts or in, in, in our jobs as it began in some of the more uh, liberal evangelical type churches. Mm -hmm. But now I have Catholic churches, Episcopal churches, Lutheran churches that we're doing full technology packages in them. And they're very, very conservative in many of the, of, of the form of the service. They're just adding the technology as a tool of communication. I've, and in fact, if, if anything else, that's the way I would say it, is, is it's not quite so much technology for itself anymore. It is really becoming a tool of communication. And the example that comes to my mind, first and foremost, is for the people who have trouble reading the words. I... Uh, I assume by the look around the crowd that I'm the senior member of this council, so I will, <laughs> I will simply tell you that I wear trifocals. And uh, bluntly, I can't see the words in the book very well, okay, because uh, I just can't. And I appreciate the fact that my church has gone to projection, uh, at least for one of our services. We have one that's very traditional. It's not there yet. But uh, at, at that service that they have the projection, I can keep up with the words. Now, fortunately, I am also senior enough to know the words to most of the songs. So it's not quite as obvious <laughs> to some people. But I still have to live with these trifocals, and it's, uh, it's a real pain. And so it, it works out well as a tool. I had it reinforced recently when a member of a particular church told me that we had just finished doing and we had a very serious projection system in it. And they told me that we, they didn't realize the pastor looked at them as much as they did. 
because they could not see the pastor's facial expression. And this particular pastor, one of the comments that he made almost 18 months before during the programming and the, and the beginning of the design phase before the building was finished, he made the comment, he says, I really am an actor, and he said, I want people to see my face. He said, I want to see the facial expression because he says, that helps me communicate. And he was, he was pretty animated, and you could, you could see that, would, that it would help him, and it did. That's great. If it's done tactfully. Yes, yes, thank you. <laughs> I will thank be you. a little careful. I am old enough to want to do it just right. Well, thank you, and I also appreciate uh, statements you made in regards to uh, technology for technology's sake, and I don't think there's a person on this panel that is in for uh, technology for technology's sake, but we want uh, technology to enhance uh, how we uh, uh, approach worship. Uh, Tim Eason, if you wouldn't mind jumping in at this point and uh, uh, give us uh, a little bit about how uh, uh, you uh, are helping enhance uh, ministry through some of the graphic designs and other mm -hmm. things uh, that are going on and, and what you see happening there. Well, there, there are some neat things happening right now on the software side. Uh, there is a trend lately of a, a, a plethora of, of worship software packages that are available uh, to churches. Their churches are finding that they project these song lyrics that we've been talking about through PowerPoint. Uh, there are some limitations to PowerPoint when it comes to projecting song lyrics because uh, a service may jump around a lot or you may need to have that flexibility of navigation. And, and so uh, uh, there are several programs available now that were written with the church in mind and being able to navigate uh, the songs easily. These were written by people who were programmers in a church and saw a need, and uh, they wrote these programs and now are bringing them to market. And so uh, there are some exciting things happening there to help uh, ease that problem with PowerPoint. Let's see, Anthony, one of the things that, adding on what Tim said, is fascinating as it is that people have actually written software specifically for the church market to aid in worship is the fact that we have really taken the, te the medium of television and duplicated it in many cases here. Because now we have the same full screen graphics or lower third graphics like you'll see on a news show. The quality is not hard to achieve. So you're able to produce a really good looking uh, format or program, so to speak, on the screens and make it easy to read and yet not be static images of another presentation. Unlike a lecture, you don't want to lecture to people in this application, you want to just help communicate. And the software that's available is letting people do that, even to the point of having real-time database searches for scripture references or songs, giving people the chance to instantly know what the pastor decided to quote a, script, uh, a scripture verse types it in, it's on the screen, people can go, oh, that's what that was, that was John 3.16, oh, okay, I can, I can write that down now. Yeah, it is great, the uh, software uh, that is being developed has allowed us to uh, use those tools um, even more effectively. Um, Vance, if I could ask you to uh, uh, jump in here, and we've been talking a lot about uh, uh, the area of video, uh, and I know you deal with uh, multiple uh, technologies. Um, if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit about uh, what's happening in the area of uh, sound system and, and sound system design uh, in the context of worship. Well, I think the, the, the thing to keep in mind when we talk about technology in, in worship is that the reason that we do all this stuff is to provide ministries with tools to communicate effectively to the people that are there. We, what we want to do is we want to give, uh, when we design a facility, when we design systems, we want to give the, the ministry team a tool to, to more effectively communicate to people, to bring them in, uh, to, to have them experience God in a way that they hadn't before that's going to change their lives. People that, are, that aren't saved that are coming in and people that are, that are, they, they want to have a, a life-enhancing experience when they, when they go there. So the important thing is to, to make sure that all these tools are designed carefully and properly so that it does provide a, uh, a, a really a meaningful experience for the people that are there. So that's, the, that's really the, the critical thing. And just as, as video projection uh, and lighting systems are... Are, have really changed the way we uh, approach worship to a lot of de to a great degree. Um, sound systems have improved as well, although some of the components haven't really changed too much. We still have speakers, we still have microphones. The processing capabilities have allowed us to to really uh, refine our designs to where we're doing multi-channel systems to uh, provide a much greater uh, worship experience. 
there's a real trend um, to doing uh, uh, systems that have improved frequency response and better coverage, uh, more spatial uh, orientation and imaging, so that it, overall it, it, it tends to kind of recreate the uh, audio experience that you might have if you attend a movie and have a THX type sound system. It, uh, we're really trying to raise that quality and that standard. And at the same time, we're, um, uh, we're, we're able to use a uh, computer uh, in our designs uh, as a design tool and also as a processing uh, analysis tool. So the technology goes beyond just what's installed in the, in the facility to the point where we actually use it in our design tools as well. Vance made a good point about uh, sound systems, which is some of the basic components really haven't changed much. Microphones, loudspeakers are still those devices at the front and back of each sound system. What goes in between has advanced quite a bit. Uh, but there are a couple of areas where the expectations that people have through the entertainment industry in particular uh, has uh, come into play in the church. Uh, one area uh, specifically is uh, praise teams that are using basically pop music and pop music instruments in church environments bring with them all of the acoustic baggage and problems that occur with pop music in ordinary secular performances. Uh, they're loud, uh, obnoxiously loud to some people. Uh, you drag in monitor systems, you drag in a lot of other things which uh, sometimes can detract from what you're really trying to do. And uh, at the same time, the production values that people expect just based on what they see on television and in, at live concerts and so forth, uh, is, is quite high. So uh, one area which has uh, been a very large growth area in the church market is wireless microphones, mm -hmm. uh, like this thing here. Mm -hmm. uh, wireless microphones are just a part of church technology these days. The newest area that we have noticed as a manufacturer uh, for technology in, a, in an area is the use of uh, in-ear type monitor systems in churches because that, as the pop music people have discovered, uh, gets rid of a lot of the acoustic bags that comes with pop music in the form of monitors and loud uh, stage instruments by reducing that to little personal monitors for the players you can get a much better control of, of live music uh, in a confined space like a church. So that's place where pop music technology has kind of crept into uh, the church market. One other place with regard to microphones is the, uh, is the awareness that a lot of churches have, have uh, developed with regard to the placement of microphones. Used to, they, people would walk away from them and they would, they would stand away from them because they were afraid of them. And then over a period of time, they've become used to them and even now, uh, when people come up to pray and everything, they know to, to kind of look at them and, and speak into them and things like that. And then I go back to just a few years ago uh, how many uh, times we would see in, in the pop world, we would see people with head-worn microphones, and yet, you, you know, preachers wouldn't even consider that. That was, you know, terrible because that I, I know one particular preacher who happened to name a particular pop singer female that he would not wear that mic because that particular person uh -huh. sang it and yet in the Christian market now we're seeing a lot of the Christian artists wearing it and I've I've now got quite a few preachers that have have been willing to start wear them of course they come in in lots of different tones and colors now so it's not quite as obvious as it used to be but the the primary purpose for that is exactly the same thing with the people walking up to the microphone. If the microphone stays physically in the same place with regard to the source, which is the mouth, then you have a very constant sound. And, and it's very easy for everybody to hear the same sound all the time, so it, it works very well. However, if you've got it on, on the shoulder or on the lapel or something, and you turn away from it and the sound changes, then the ear notices the change, and instead of listening to the words, you listen to the change in the sound. And the idea is is to is to be consistent with the sound, even if it's like if I back away from the mic, which I'm not going to do. But if if you were to back away from this mic, the sound man could make an adjustment, 
And as long as it was consistent, if I was a foot away from the mic, as long as the sound was consistent, it wouldn't be right, but at least it would be such that the words could be understood. But if I kept rocking back and forth and changing the, the, the shape of the, uh, of, of the picture and, and the distance between the mic, then the, the result would be you'd hear the change more than you hear the words I'm saying. Vance? I'm sorry. No. I thought you were going to talk. Oh, no. I, I, I thought that's why you're waving at me and screaming. I'm sorry. No, I, I agree, though. Um, you know, the, the, that's the key is that we're, we're using, finding better ways to use technology to our, to our benefit that, that makes the quality better. The goal, again, is to, to provide an environment where people can hear the message. And so the better we can do with the technology, the better we can do with, with uh, communicating that message. And that's, you know, the example of the head-worn mics that you used. If somebody's comfortable preaching with a head-worn mic, maybe for the first two or three minutes, people would be looking at him saying, oh, he's wearing a, a mic on his head. And then after that, all they're going to do, once they get past that and they start listening to what he's going to say, they're never going to notice it after that because they are listening to you know, the, the words that he's saying. And so if you, once you get past the initial, oh, there's speakers up in the air, there's lights up in the air, I mean, it kind of has some of these things that in, in a lot of churches have been... Um, you know, they've just you. You don't want to bring in these things and show them. We we want to have good sound, but we don't want to hear this. We don't want to see any speakers up there. So now people are accepting of that. Once they accept, okay, yeah, there's speakers up there. Now let's go ahead and get on with the business of doing our ministry. And it and it becomes much more effective because now we're we're doing better job with uh, with getting sound and with getting visual images to the uh, to the people so that they can they can hear the message much better. Thanks, Vance, for that, and uh, thanks to the rest of the panel. Open Line is going to take a break here, uh, and when we come back, I'm going to ask Vance to uh, uh, start us off as we uh, begin to look at the uh, worship environment uh, as a whole from uh, an acoustical standpoint, from a visual standpoint, and uh, from a complete setting of the room. Uh, so Open Line will be back right after this break. <laughs> 